Join Dalton and Jacob as they discuss the ever-changing world of trading card games. TCG Buzz starts now. Before we begin, I have something I'd like to say. In these trying times, TCG Buzz needs your help more than ever. If you would like to buy some trading cards using our TCG player link, you can do so and you'll support us when it counts most. Also, we have a Patreon. Hello and welcome to TCG Buzz. My name is Jacob and I'm joined by Bryce. Man, it's been a while. Yeah, it really has been. I've been recording from home a bunch, uh, so we haven't been together in the same room in quite a while um, because of... Well, you guys know. Uh, look at, and if you're watching this in the future, look at the date stamp. You'll remember the times we were in uh, when we recorded this. Um, we can't say the 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 two C words uh, related to the current time. Otherwise, this video will get demonetized. Uh, so we're going to call it the Crush Card Virus. Why not just call it demonetization virus? <laughs> um, we are going to be talking. Loosely about the current situation, but more what we can expect from card games going forward in the future. Uh, because I don't know if you guys noticed, but we've seen a drastic shift in the entire card game industry because of the events of 2020. Um, so, uh, some positive, mostly negative. Um, unfortunately, well, we'll start with this. A lot of card games have died. Unfortunately. Uh, it's been a very hard time. Now, don't worry if you're a Magic the Gathering fan or Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon. Any of the big card games, you're fine. Everything's okay. Don't panic. Yeah, the big three. Well, I should say at this point, big four. Big five. I'll throw in Dragon Ball and Vanguard. Um. I mean, hey, Bushy's gotta have something. Yeah. <laughs> I feel... There are a lot of card games out there. It's some more very niche on the very, very niche side. Mm -hmm. Some more well-known that are really struggling. And uh, you could argue some of them would have died regardless of the global crisis. But a lot of them probably wouldn't have. I'm using probably because, you know, nothing's certain. Yep. Uh there are a lot of games that have died. What games have you played that have died in the past year? It, what games have you, are you, you a fan of that died in 2020? Well, fortunately, I didn't have the chance to play any of them because they they were just never brought up to me. No one said, hey, did you want to try this? And then here you go. Um, let's see. Transformers died. Yeah. Uh, or... or or Bay, Future Card Buddy Fight died. Um, uh, Fire Emblem Cypher died, unfortunately. Um, Light. Well, there are also a bunch of games that are close. Right. Uh, well, I, I well call we shouldn't say that Buddy Fight is dead yet, but it has a deadline yeah, um, to where it ends. I would say there are a lot of games that are currently like, they're not dead, they're more like on life support. And I'm sure one or two of them will survive it, but most of them will not. Games like Force of Will. I'm not dissing any of the card games, by the way. Please don't hate us for this. You know, don't don't live up to the card game stereotype of being salty. <laughs> uh, Force of Will is one of them. Light Seekers. Uh, what what else? Um, it's a, it's so unfortunate because I actually liked a lot of Force of Will's like gameplay wise for the most part it's just their art style i just could Chrono not no clash oh man a uh, missed opportunity there are a lot and uh i think it's not just about what games are dead or dying and what games are going to live it's more about the industry as a whole because we have gone from what is possibly the strongest era for card games ever the big boom of like 2015-ish to like 2018. You had so many new card games come out and many of them do well enough to at least last for a couple of years. Uh, tons of new card games, tons upon tons. Force of Will came out, uh, 
Bushiroad released a new game every week. Uh, you also had the big, big rise of digital card games like Hearthstone, uh, Gwent. And then years later, we got Final Fantasy. Yeah, that was around that time. Um, what else? There are tons. But we went from this marvelous era. It was the era that got me back into playing card games because there was so much new, interesting, exciting stuff going on. Mm -hmm. uh, into 2020, probably being the weakest year overall for the TCG market ever. All right. Uh, maybe... I maybe I'd say 2007's worse uh, because you had both the death of the the it, popping of the bubble of the anime card games. Yep. And then also the global recession. Uh, so maybe 2007 wins. <laughs> um, but 2020 is a close runner up. And at least 2020 had an excuse, man. Yeah, that's fair. Um it's sad to see a lot of the card games go, and it's even sadder to see those that are really struggling to keep going. Um, but there are also a ton of card games that are doing strong, primarily the big boys. Yep. I mean, especially Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon, because they have an anime that you can follow, watch, and, you know, the kids, you know, are like, oh, I like that thing, and I want to play what he's playing, and yada, yada, yada. And that's genius marketing. Magic, on the other hand, has gotten like full throttle on their cinematic trailers. Oh, and they're, they're great. Oh, they've gotten so much better since their production OG value Theros. is insane. Right. Especially compared to OG Theros, where it was just like stills or whatever. And it was like, wow, how my far favorite was gone. Eldraine's. Eldraine was pretty good. Yeah. Um, well, we're getting off topic. It's weird, though, to call 2020. We're not trying to be doom and gloom on this. We're just trying to be realists and state the facts. Um. It's weird to say that it's such a bad year for card games as well when, like, the secondhand markets for pretty much everything are exploding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in uh, Particularly uh, Magic uh, and uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! somewhat, and especially Pokemon. Uh, the collectibles market is doing possibly better than it ever has before. Uh, but that's also partially due to inflation, due to stimulus, and people getting back into the hobby because they suddenly have a lot of free time <laughs> uh what about you have you done more with any card games because you've been stuck at home well namely yes because it's like yeah you can play video games but after a while it just feels like beating your head against a wall and sometimes it just isn't fun when you get knocked off the stage like 16 times and you're like well uh uninstall we're gonna vent for a little bit and let's play some magic the gathering <laughs> I mean, just to throw that as an example, you know? Yeah. Um, what I really want to address here is I think there's going to be a lot more longer term consequences of this than people might realize. Um, particularly, there's another big effect from the... Card game disaster. We had to clickbait it. The card game disaster of 2020. I mean, it is, though. Uh, that has not really been thought about that much. Uh, yes, a lot of card games have died or struggled. And, you know, every card game has seen their competitive scene mm -hmm. shrivel up, uh, you know, except for the games that are have digital versions. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're going to see two real big long term consequences of this. One more digital. I hoped you like paying money for that in-game currency. Uh, it's it's just a fact. Uh, we've seen that digital card games are more stable in times like this. Uh, you know, I'm sure Hearthstone's doing just fine. Magic Arena selling like crazy, and uh, it's coming to mobile reportedly soon. Yeah, thank. <laughs> <laughs> no, knowing our luck when we always record a couple days ahead of time, right? It'll. <laughs> I, I just loved how it happens vague. every time. The, I loved how super vague they were. It's like soon. Thanks. Um, <laughs> the other big effect of this long term is the one that worries me. It's the fact that we're not going to get new card games. No, uh, we are going from one of the most creative explosive eras of new card games to one of the most 
conservative bide your time eras uh, because there's uncertainty in these uncertain times. Well, yeah. Uh, and as a business owner, whether you're a giant corporation or you're a single dev, you know, working out of your basement, uh, uncertainty makes you take less risks. Uh, I see much less development of new card games within the next couple of years. Um, I mean, look at this. What new card games have come out recently? <laughs> no. Uh, did, we got Digimon. Yay! In January. That's, Yay! that's the date they set out. I'm so excited for that, man. But I think uh, going into the rest of 2020, all of 2021, and maybe even into 2022... Uh, we are going to see very few new card games. Uh, and what I think that is going to cause is an increase in the overall value of the big stable card games and the little one-man team card games. Uh, if you guys have never played any of the very small independent card games out there, not even talking trading cards necessarily, even standalone products... Uh, there's a wide market, incredible stuff, and I've seen a lot of players of traditional TCGs moving towards uh, non-randomized products. Look at yourself. Uh, what have you been investing all of your time and money into? Actually, Legendary, because that game is uh, hella fun. And it's not a TCG. It's a deck oh. building game. Yeah. I see those products seeing an increase uh, in their overall market share of the tabletop industry. Give you another example. Look at the commander format for Magic. Because that's why the standard stuff is just slam dunking into the ground because you can't get into your local game store anymore for the most part. But you can sure as hell sit at home with you, your family and friends and then play a game of commander all you want. And that's why all that stuff is skyrocketing. The mid 2010s saw a lot of new publishers entered the TCG scene. Uh, and a lot of companies who had kind of not necessarily left the market, but decreased their presence, uh, revitalized their presence. Like Bandai. Bandai is probably the best example. Uh, Bandai went into the 2010s in a very weak position. Mm -hmm. uh, all of their card games were either done or about to be done, like the Naruto CCG. Uh, it was, uh, I want to say it lasted until 2012, maybe 2013, but it really hit its peak in like 08, 09. Uh, and then they come back and they're just like, boom, Dragon Ball Super, we're going hard on it. Uh, here's this really wacky new thing called Chrono Clash, which uh, we'll talk about Chrono Clash another time. And it's funny because Super wasn't doing that hot either after like four sets and then set five, it bounced right back, which is pretty, which is ironic because the name of the set was Miraculous Revival, but it was quite <laughs> the miraculous revival from them because it revitalized the game for as, better or for worse. As a avid fan of TCGs, and uh, if you know me, you know I'm not, one of the people who's hyper loyal to one card game. I've got plenty of friends who are, I will play this one card game, ride or die forever. <laughs> die on this hill. <laughs> uh, I'm not one of them. I like variety. Variety is probably the most important thing for me. And part of that is I, I've played every card game, Ev every, every card game. I, <laughs> you, you name it. Uh, I've probably played it. Um, and, as someone who's very interested in game design, that's important for me because it helps me contextualize other games. I think the more you play different uh, tabletop games and TCGs in particular, uh, the more your knowledge of them increases. Right. And we're in this weird point where things kind of got stagnant for a while with actual new game design in the TCG market. It was a lot of copying but changing slightly uh and then you had some really weird new ideas towards the end of the big boom era uh you had uh chrono clash which i've already mentioned like twice uh but which used a incredibly revolutionary new resource engine 
I mean, look at Buddy Fight, their whole gauge mechanic and Beautiful. everything. Great. Uh, Light Seekers, incredibly unique. I have never played another game like Light Seekers. Have you ever played Light Seekers? No. It's so weird uh, to contextualize it for you using, uh, we'll use magic lingo. It's like you have artifacts and every card's an artifact and they tap at the beginning of your turn, but they have four different positions. So every card's like a, a saga. But what kind of insanity is this unset? <laughs> it's really cool and it was really well designed, but they struggled and... Uh, I mean, they were on their way out before all of this. And a lot of card games were. We went into 2020 with a lot of card games on a weaker foot than they had in pre been in previous years. Right. And they were, you know, stumbling around a little bit, trying to find their way. And then uh, <laughs> they get sucker punched in the face. Right. Um, and they're all hurting. Uh, you will see... Even the big boys are making changes to monetization uh, because they're scared. Yeah. Uh, you will see a lot more playing towards collectors and higher and more expensive products. I mean, look at Super and fr friggin' Watsy. I mean, Super, they made three Seeker Rares in a box instead of, you know, the one, then the two. And then they actually changed the way Box Toppers works for now it's any... Special rare or super rare in the set, which, by the way, is the best way to do box toppers, in my opinion, because it makes the opening of the box that much more exciting other than, oh, it's this card again for like the sixth time. Thanks. Even the more stable card games that have generally stayed the same forever, uh, I think the most stable card game is Pokemon. Pokemon very rarely changes. And it's cheap. Sometimes. Most I remember Shane and EX. Oh, don't, uh, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> I remember Tapu Lele. Stop. <laughs> the staples can get very expensive. Well, yeah. But in general, it's not that bad. Oh, yeah. Um, but Pokemon's very stable. They change things up and there's power creep. But you don't really ever see radical shifts in the fundamental structure of the game. And you're starting to see that now with a bigger emphasis on specialty sets, sets that you can't buy in a big booster box, sets that are uh, like Hidden Fates, where it's all about the bling uh, mm -hmm. and it's about the intentional scarcity. And same thing with Watsy Secret Layers. It's like these are a limited run. You can only buy these within 24 hours and that's it. That's all that's ever going to be printed. And then that is your only time to get them outside of, you know, secondary market and whatnot. Now, let's talk about uh, let's not be all doom and gloom. Let's talk about some good things coming out of this era. Uh, one good thing uh, is you're starting to see a lot more flexibility in how you're allowed to play card games. Uh, for years, years, Konami pushed back against the digital front for Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, but... Now you look at it and now they're they embracing duels. it. And, and the, oh, I'm totally blanking on its name. The the film yourself playing software. Oh, what is that? Is that uh, the, the VR thing? No, not quite. It's cool. Um, but all the card games are doing these. The thing we're finding out is your competitive scene, your tournaments, Everything needs to become more flexible. And uh, that's going to be a lot of awkwardness for some of these companies because particularly uh, some of these companies are very stubborn uh, and it's going to be hard for them to adapt to a very changing market for card games. I think uh, the, the TCG market of 2025 will look nothing like 2015. I think the next couple of years are going to be very transformative for card games. I haven't felt that way since the early 2000s. And it's kind of funny because we're kind of almost f kind of being chokeholded into this whole f way of change because you're forced to adapt and overcome because otherwise you're just going to stagnate and die like much like these older other games. Like it, it sucks to say that, but. Just when you're not able to change, 
you can't adapt to whatever obstacles is in your way. But as a positive, uh, this calling of card games could be a good thing because it will open the space for a lot of new, brilliant minds who haven't gotten their time to shine uh, and come up with, you know, bring out their big revolutionary idea to get that chance. Uh, Because we are going into what is definitely the least crowded TCG market. And that way you're just not struggling for competition. Yeah. Uh, For real, uh, competition is drastically decreasing because there are just so many uh, fewer games. I think the other thing with that is you're going to start seeing a lot more players who play two games or three uh, that aren't diehard into just one because it's like a it's like when you're uh, betting on the stock market you know you don't want to dump all your money in tesla you want to diversify your portfolio or whatever see i can use business words um you don't want to be the guy who dumped his entire paycheck every month for years into the dragon ball z tcg and then it died and your collection was mostly worthless. Yeah. You need to diversify your funds into various card games. And it's a lot of fun to do so. Uh, you generally, how many card games would you say you play at a time? Like really focused on? I'd say about two or three. Yeah, I think uh, I'd probably put myself right around that. Like three, I think, would be where I'm at. I'm pretty heavily focused on ufs especially since they got those delicious ips and then you know of course super love the game it's my favorite game and of course magic because it's been around with me for so long it's kind of just second nature at this point now i'm kind of in a weird spot because i i kind of lost all the card games i really liked (laughs) um sorry chum I still play a lot of Magic, and uh, I'm definitely going to get big into the new Digimon card game. And it's nice to learn something new, because it's a nice breakaway from just something that you're just... just Because people get burnt out. Yeah. Being burnt out at card games is a very real thing. Look at pro players. They don't want to play that game after they, <laughs> after they you know go through a whole event. You know, this entire discussion, it's all speculation, but, you know, I've been avidly following the tcg market for around 20 years now (laughs) you know there are trends and patterns you can find and uh it's much like a forest fire when the entire forest gets burned down uh it makes it better for the new seeds to grow because they got all that fertilizer yeah uh and i feel that's what's exciting about this this is one of the few occasions where i truly don't know what card games are going to look like in a couple years time uh whereas i feel like the past decade while great and awesome uh was kind of playing it safe i guess and not not intentionally you know subconsciously uh and there was surprisingly not very much innovation going on Uh, And I think that's going to change. I think uh, the early 2020s are going to be crazy with new flashy ideas uh, that totally change how we play card games. But but that still doesn't answer the big question, though. Hmm. When are we going to get one piece of the card game (laughs) part two? (laughs) Uh, Just make it a Chrono Clash set. Oh, wait. (laughs) Oh, come on now. I just made myself sad. (laughs) Uh, At this point, we're going to have to do a Chrono Clash episode soon. Uh, You guys should let us know if you want us to do a full episode on Chrono Clash's failings, because Chrono Clash, wow, it's like a, it's like, (laughs) it's like someone uh, is born, they're they're the avatar, they're the chosen one, right? And they just turn out to completely fall on their face. (laughs) Yeah, thanks Off. for uh, thanks uh, for that. It had so much going for it, going right, and it was squandered. Uh, so we'll talk about that sometime. We're 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 getting off topic here, but I think we're getting close to wrapping up. 
Yeah. What are your big thoughts on the future of card games and how it might have changed because of the world-shaking year that was 2020? Honestly, I feel like this was basically the extinction of the dinosaurs where a lot of the weaker species got killed off. And then we're going to plant the seeds for more successful upcoming brands of card games to come up to fruition. I'm wondering what the B team at Wizards of the Coast is going to be doing next, because they're always doing, you know, they always have a secondary card game uh, from uh, 2011, 2012 to 2014-ish. It was Kaijudo, you know, and then after that, it was My Little Pony. And then when that died, they very quickly came out with Transformers. That's dead now. What's next? You know, damn well, it's going to be Transformers Part 2. <laughs> Maybe a Dungeons and Dragons card game? What other Hasbro licenses? Nerf the card game. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nerf or nothing. All right, that's going to end this episode, uh, guys. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe. Uh, it was a little bit of a ranty, rambly episode, but there are a lot of thoughts and opinions to get it out there about the current times we're in and where we're going in the future. So uh, please, more than anything, what are your thoughts? We're just two idiots sitting at a table. Uh, we want to know what you think. Where are card games going? Are more card games going to die? Are the uh, thoughts of a card game ex mass extinction overblown? What? Anything else? Uh... No? Yeah. Check out our uh, Instagram. We post a bunch of stuff there. And join our Discord if you'd like to talk about it further uh, after you've left a comment telling us your thoughts. Give us a follow on Twitter. Oh, yeah, we have a Twitter. <laughs> I always forget we have a Twitter. <laughs> uh, and uh, if this you'd like to support us, like I mentioned at the beginning, is a joke. But seriously, uh, we could use any support you're willing to give us. If, and uh, you can do that by either giving us money directly through our Patreon and getting perks like early videos. Or if you'd rather just buy stuff and help us for literally no cost to you, uh, use our TCG player link. We get a small cut of whatever you buy. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening to TCG Buzz. New episodes can be found on TCGBuzz.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. For box openings, deck profiles, and more, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.